Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward. Welcome to APTN National News. A blockade at a Winnipeg landfill is still standing after an injunction order was granted to the city to have it removed on Friday. It went up after the province decided there wouldn't be a search for the remains of Indigenous women who are believed to be at a landfill north of the city. As protesters at Camp Morgan plan to expand their presence, experts are backing the calls for a search of the landfill. And as Tamara Pimentel reports, they say it is feasible and similar searches have been done in the past. After months of back and forth between Indigenous leaders and governments, experts say a search at the Brady and Prairie Green landfills is feasible. And the search can be conducted safely. Any argument, I guess, uh, that would oppose those findings, in our opinion, aren't necessarily um, based in fact. Christopher Dueck is the CEO with Rocky Mountain Forensic Consulting. He, along with other experts, say similar searches have been done before, including a search at Sault Ste. Marie and Toronto landfills. They join Grand Chief Kathy Merrick with the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs and families of Mercedes Myron and Morgan Harris to demand the Manitoba government to reconsider a search at the landfills. I ask you today, Premier, that you reconsider your decision and that you search the landfills for our loved ones. That's the only thing you can do that will better our relationship. At the Brady Landfill, the blockade remains. Protesters were given until Friday evening to take the barrier down after an injunction was granted. But they say it will stay standing until a search is conducted. The blockade went up after Manitoba Premier Heather Stephenson said she will not approve a search. And those at the blockade and Camp Morgan say they plan on starting another camp. Teepees are expected to be set up outside the Canadian Museum for Human Rights Monday evening. Tamara Pimentel, APTN National News, Winnipeg. Meanwhile, in Ottawa on Monday, missing and murdered women and girls activists held a rally on Parliament Hill in support of Camp Morgan. Red dresses were laid out on the grass along with the pictures of those who are still missing or have been murdered. Bridget Tolley is with Families of Sisters of Spirit and one of the organizers of the event. She says the current situation in Winnipeg shows a failure uh, at all levels of leadership to seriously address the MMIWG issue. It is the government, the federal, provincial, uh, police, chiefs and councils, they're the leaders, they should be doing something about this, you know. And it seems like it's just the grassroots um, families are doing something to support and help the, the missing and murdered. Convicted murderers Brian Anderson and Alan Woodhouse will find out their fate in a Winnipeg courtroom tomorrow. The two Indigenous men's convictions were recently subjected to a ministerial review by Justice Minister David Lametti. In June of this year, Lametti uh, ordered a new trial for both men. The two men were convicted in 1974 and sentenced to life with no chance of parole for 10 years for the 1973 murder of Ting Fong Chang that happened in downtown Winnipeg. They are represented by wrongful conviction lawyers Jerome Kennedy and James Lockyer through Innocence Canada. A decision will be made tomorrow in Winnipeg. We will bring you more as the story develops. Still to come, a liquefied natural gas conference highlights the economic opportunities First Nations are reaping, while others worry about the environmental impact. Stick around. Welcome back. A conference that brings together global players in the liquefied natural gas industry wrapped up in Vancouver last week. 
APTN's Tina House was there to see how Indigenous nations are playing a role in this burgeoning economy. Over 15,000 delegates from around the world gathered in Vancouver to discuss the economic opportunities for liquefied natural gas, otherwise known as LNG. Mel Idrios is the executive director of LNG 2023. He says this event has attracted the top players in LNG and he is excited to watch deals being brokered. The world needs more LNG, particularly to ensure energy security, affordability, and they want Canadian gas. They want Canadian LNG because they know that it is the most responsibly produced LNG in the world. Idrios points to LNG Canada and their massive project currently being built in Kitimat, BC, which when complete will accommodate super tankers bound for Asian markets and Indigenous nations are benefiting with over four and a half billion dollars given out in contracts with that one project. One, two, three. <laughs> the Nishka Nation is also hoping to benefit from the proposed LNG economy. They have partnered with Rockies LNG and Western LNG to build a floating facility just north of Prince Rupert in their territory. If approved, it would deliver 12 million tons of LNG yearly to Asian markets. Economically, for the nation, it's going to bring um, not only prosperity, it's not only going to um, uh, build our economy. Our economy is um, basically non-existent other than tourism. Uh, for many years, Indigenous people have been on the, on the wayside watching development of our lands. The Nisqan Nation excited, is excited to be involved. We took a deep dive into the project. We are um, work diligently with our uh, team, so it's going to mean a lot because it's going to be Indigenous driven. However, Joe Foy from the Wilderness Committee is not in support, saying LNG extraction contributes to climate change. The industry, the companies essentially pump tons and tons, literally tons and tons of chemically laced water under high pressure underground to fracture the formations to force the gas out. And that ticking time bomb sits there underground for future generations to deal with. The whole world is faced with a need for money, but you know what? If we shared the money we have a little better, we wouldn't have to steal a future from our kids and our grandkids. And that's what this industry is doing. Tina House, APTN National News, Vancouver. On a story we brought you last week, McLeod Lake Indian Band has released a statement in response to reports that its forestry company has clear-cut up to 90% of its treaty lands. On Friday, we reported nearly 2 million cubic meters of forest worth $140 million was logged over a 10-year period. Uh, over half of this logging occurred in 2019. But McLeod Lake Chief Harley Chingi writes he's outraged at what he called unfair and lazy coverage. He says $137 million has been dedicated to the band and that a pine beetle infestation left them no choice but to clear cut. Chief Chingy turned down our requests for an interview. To the north where provincial, territorial and federal early learning and childhood education ministers from across the country gathered in Nunavut's capital recently to discuss shared priorities across their respective jurisdictions. The retention and recruitment of workers in early learning and childcare was one of the main challenges discussed according to the Federal Minister of Families, Children and Social Development, Karina Gould. One of the challenges facing Nunavut is the ongoing housing crisis, which is also impacting early learning and childcare workers in the territory. Gould also highlighted the uh, Government of Canada's plan for $10 a day childcare, which Nunavut opted into last year. Nunavut's Minister of Education, Pamela Gross, highlighted the necessity of having staff housing available for its early learning and childcare workers. 
The North American Indigenous Games are finally here. We have all the highlights from the opening ceremony, cultural village, and today's action. That's coming up after the break. Welcome back. Time now for our photo of the day. And this great shot of an inner lit teepee against the backdrop of a beautiful clear sky. Look at those stars. Thanks, Rebecca, for capturing this moment and sharing it with all our viewers. If you have a great photo to share, send it to uh, send it by email to share at aptn.ca. Now let's take a look at tomorrow's weather forecast. Starting on the East Coast, showers and 24 for Halifax and Fredericton. 19 with rain in Kujuac, 24 for Nain. Rain and 25 in Montreal, showers and 22 for Valdor. 21 and cloudy in Sault Ste. Marie, rain and 23 for North Bay. 22 in Thunder Bay, 21 for Sioux Lookout. In Northern Manitoba, 20 for God's Lake, 23 in Norway House. Showers and 25 for Winnipeg, rain and 21 in Dauphin. 22 with showers for Regina, 19 in North Battleford. Showers and 17 in Meadow Lake, 22 in La Ronge. In Northern Alberta, 23 for Grand Prairie, rain and 26 in Fort McMurray. 17 with showers in Edmonton, sun's out and 28 in Lethbridge. Sunny and 28 for Kamloops, 23 and sunny in Vancouver. Smoky and 20 for Prince George, 19 in Smithers. 20 with rain in Old Crow, 23 in Whitehorse. Showers and 23 in Trout Lake. Smoke and 24 for Yellowknife. Sunny and 21 for Saks Harbor, 17 in Politec. 22 with showers in Baker Lake, 19 in Sun for Cambridge Bay. 14 in Resolute, 10 in Arctic Bay. Well, the North American Indigenous Games have begun and athletes are streaming in. Jordan's and Nash's journey began in Northwestern Ontario. He's now in Halifax with three other youth representing their small First Nations at NAG. Video journalist Carly Shogner spoke with Jordanson as he was playing in that Cam Meg winning with his brothers. Anything in the world, as long as you put your mind to it. Hi, I'm Jordanson Nash, and I'm from Nimki Wajing, 37, and I'm 18 years old. And I'm going to be representing Team Ontario at NAG for soccer. Uh, I've never been to Halifax, so this is a, this is a very exciting opportunity for me. Uh, not too many people get to experience something like this and yeah it's just gonna it sounds like it's gonna be really fun and a very fun experience. Uh, sports means a whole lot to me because basically uh, through my whole life I dedicated my whole life to sports basically trying to perfect my craft in everything I do I guess any sport I do whether that is hockey, basketball, soccer, baseball, volleyball sometimes just whatever. I do what I do to hopefully inspire others, especially my brothers, and set them a good example so they can live a good, healthy life without drugs and alcohol, and just pave a whole new path for others, and hopefully inspire kids from around here too, to try to be like me in a sense without the drugs and alcohol and whatnot, and just, I don't know, show them that there's a, a better life than what, than what they know. It's important to me because I come from a uh, very hard, and I have, I have a very hard history of my life, so, and I just want no one else to go through the same thing, and like, I don't know, just like to not like let anything break anyone, I guess, and like I want them to see me as, as an example to like, I don't know, see someone who's been through a whole lot to accomplish so many things you can do anything that you want as long as you put the time and effort into something you love and yeah accomplish anything that you want really if you if you do that if you have that type of mindset well sunday night saw over 10,000 spectators combined with over 5,000 athletes 
pack into the Scotiabank Center for the NAG opening ceremonies. Our Daryl Stranger was there. A vibrant and lively parade kicked off Sunday evening's opening ceremonies outside of the Scotiabank Centre. Family and supporters lined the streets of downtown Halifax, many proud of those that are competing. I guess a lot of pride from everyone just representing where they're from and being proud of where they are and how far they've come to be here. So, yeah, as a parent, this is a really proud moment for me. For my two grandchildren, it is going to be a great experience. For one in particular, she's never left her home. The other, the volleyball player has traveled the world to play volleyball. Just to see all these youths uh, have that team spirit and enjoy their uh, um, enjoy themselves and be excited and inspired of all these people and uh, the cheering on and how excited and how powerful it is to represent your own community, your own tribe and um, I'm just feeling uh, excitement for them too. It will just be amazing just to watch all of these young people. Yeah. Be together. Yeah, that, that's going to be amazing. Teams entered the arena and paraded through to the cheers of the thousands of spectators. Many leaders and dignitaries were on hand, including Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. So yes, over the coming week, we will be celebrating your athletic achievements. We will be celebrating the wonderful competitions and the camaraderie that happens at these games. But mostly, we will be celebrating the strength, the power, the achievements, and the presence, and identity, and culture, and the future you represent. That is what we are here for. That is why we celebrate. That's why these games are so important. Chief Norman Bernard gave some advice to those athletes competing. Each time you step onto the field, court or arena, remember who you were, where you come from, and who you represent, your family, your community, and your nation. We are the North American Indigenous Games! The there were many performances from local Mi'kmaq artists as well to keep the energy high throughout and to end the opening ceremonies. Daryl Stranger, APTN National News, Jabuktuk, also known as Halifax. Well, the games opened on Saturday with the lighting of a traditional fire. It happened at the Cultural Village on the Halifax Commons. APTN's Chris Stewart was there. This sacred fire, which will burn until the game's closing, means the 2023 North American Indigenous Games have officially opened. The games will welcome athletes and spectators alike especially to this cultural village located in the heart of Halifax in the large commons field. Vendors, music, and Mi'kmaq teachings await those who visit. Fiona Kirkpatrick Parsons is the chair of the 2023 North American Indigenous Games. Kirkpatrick Parsons is excited to welcome the teenage athletes. To have people coming from all across Turtle Island, from as far away as California, you know, Yukon, Nunavut, Nunatsiavut, Florida, all parts in between, it's amazing to think that they're all coming here, all these youth, aged 13 to 19, are here to meet each other and compete against each other and make friends and share culture. It's such a beautiful feeling and a celebration of Mi'kmaq culture too, which is the host culture for these games, and it's a beautiful culture. The event has been a long time in coming. Originally scheduled for 2020, the COVID pandemic delayed the games until now. George Tex Marshall is the president of the 2023 Games Host Society. So they're going to learn a bit about our language. Uh, they've obviously learned about ceremony with the sacred fire. Uh, we're also going to have uh, displays of our traditional game known as Waltes. And that game has been with us since time immemorial. He says the games will feature good battles between the teams. Quality of the competition here is very high. Uh, there's some excellent athletes and teams that will be competing here this week uh, from all over Turtle Island. Competition will continue until next Saturday with 756 Indigenous nations competing in 19 sports and venues. Chris Stewart, APTN National News, Halifax.
like to be shopping there myself. Well, one of the first sports kicking the games off is soccer. And the 16 and under men's Alberta team got a final practice in before starting their quest for a gold medal. Here again is Daryl. With each pass and kick of the ball, Team Alberta is putting the final touches on preparations ahead of their opening day matchup against Team British Columbia. The team is shaking off the rust and using one final practice to ready their game plan. You won't be hard pressed to find excitement from any of the boys on the team. I'm super happy to be here. Uh, I, I was really excited when I found out that there was even a chance that I could come to this and uh, happy to like be a part of my culture and uh, who I am and do it uh, like while playing a sport I love. I love the game soccer. You know, it's just, you know, I just looking forward to the games. It's a great opportunity for Indigenous people such as myself and, you know, it's, yeah, just great experience overall. There. I'm a goalkeeper and I love playing keeper. It's just what I love. Uh, sharing with your teammates, making friends, it's always the best. Oh yeah, the overall experience. I mean, really far away from where we live. We're not going to Kamloops or something. We're all halfway across, well, full way across the country and playing what we like to play. So it's great and it's different. Not everyone gets to do it. For Sangregret, the culture might be the most important part of the games. The culture aspect is probably more important because we're here for a week. We play one game each day, hour and a half game. Our bus ride here, our bus ride back, but at the end of the day, most of our time is going to be spent doing cultural things, going around the city, experiencing different things, so that's probably even more important. Daryl Stranger, APTN National News, Jabuktuk, also known as Halifax. And earlier today, Team British Columbia defeated Team Alberta by a score of 2-1. to one. Well, as you saw, the Prime Minister is there, and he paddled his way across a lake in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, Monday morning to help kick off the games. Mi'kmaq chiefs and athletes paddled uh, with Trudeau in a war canoe across Bannock, uh, Lake Bannock, where elders and athletes greeted the Prime Minister at the wharf. Bannock is Mi'kmaq, meaning uh, the first lake part of the waterway that was once a trading route. Trudeau spoke about the importance of the canoe used in the past to connect and meet other people, a skill that is important to youth today. Trudeau told the crowd that he looks forward to seeing the outcome of the competition and the lessons learned. But every single moment that we are here together, learning from each other, challenging from each other. We are growing, we are creating a better world. And uh, the, what I said last night about young people, these young indigenous people carrying the future for all of us into the coming decades is so important, inspiring and comforting as well. Because the incredible young people we see here today uh, mean the future is in very good hands. Well, of course, we will have much, much more coming from the North American Indigenous Games in the coming days. You can also find a, a special NAG page and much more also over on our website, aptnnews.ca. That's all the time we have for your Monday newscast. I'm Dennis Ward, Marcy. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you back here tomorrow.